Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Bododini Jitsu Dojo, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about a book that I'm going to read from. The particular book that I'm going to read from today is called The Hagakure, The Book of the Samurai. This particular book was written by Yamamoto Tsutomo, and it was translated by William Scott Wilson. This book itself, to me, really clearly defines on what it is like to actually be samurai, how you're supposed to carry yourself to be samurai, to be a true martial artist, to be an honorable person. To me, this book clearly defines that, and it's one of my most favorite books of all time. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you some of my favorite passages from this particular book. I'm also going to add a few of my own interpretations of it as well. This book is an extremely, to me, it's an extremely important book to anyone who studies true Budo. The way of the samurai is found in death. When it comes to either or, there is only one quick choice of death. There was a man who said, such and such a person has such a violent disposition, but this is what I said right to his face. This was unbecoming thing to say, and it was said simply because he wanted to be known as a rough fellow. It was rather low, and it can be seen that he was still rather immature. It is because a samurai has correct manners that he is admired. Speaking of other people in this way is no different from an exchange between low-class spearmen. It is vulgar. In this particular passage, I think it's very clear that Yamamoto Sutomo was saying that a samurai is regarded as being very honorable and um, very loyal because of the dignity and the way that they carry themselves. Um, only the people who talk vulgar about other people um, that's for low-class people that don't have any honor, no uh, dignity about themselves. Um, and the people that do that, uh, they're definitely not samurai. They're definitely not ones who are trying to follow the way. There is something to be learned from a rainstorm. When meeting with a sudden shower, you try not to get wet and run quickly along the road. But when doing such things as passing under the eaves of houses, you still get wet. When you are resolved from the beginning, you will not be perplexed, though you still get the same soaking. This understanding extends to everything. This is true. How many of us in life want to succeed? We all want to become something, whether it's a martial art teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer. It doesn't matter. All of us want to succeed in life. But to succeed, you have to walk out there. You have to put yourself on the line. When you achieve success, that brings light to your life, and that brings happiness. But keep in mind, every time you add light to your life, there's always going to be a shadow. You shouldn't focus so much on whether you're getting wet. You shouldn't focus so much on the shadow from the light that you're seeking. You should focus on that light, focus on that positivity, and keep moving in the correct way and the correct path in your journey of Buddha. In China, there was once a man who liked pictures of dragons, and his clothing and furnishings were all designed accordingly. His deep affection for dragons was brought to the attention of the dragon god, and one day a real dragon appeared before his window. It is said that he died of fright. He was probably a man who always spoke big words, but acted different when facing the real thing. I think this particular passage by Yamamoto Sutomo is extremely clear. How many people do you guys know that they wear the right clothing, they speak the right words, they read the right books, and they know all the answers? But when they're faced with danger, when someone steps up right in front of their face, they back down and cower because they truly know in their heart they are cowards. And the best thing they got is the book of the dragon or the furnishings of a dragon. You can own all of these physical items you want, but at the end of the day, you're either samurai or you're not. You have loyalty or you don't. There are people that will step up in the face of danger and overcome because they have a lot of courage. And there are people that will cower down because they're nothing but cowards. The proper manner of calligraphy is nothing other than not being careless. But in this way, one's writing will simply be sluggish and stiff. One should go beyond this and depart from the norm. These principles applies to all things.
This is true. In martial arts, we learn form. We learn kata. You learn how to do the form a certain way. But to master that form and to understand what it means, you have to break off of a specific form. There are so many people that get fixed inside a box. It's like, I found the answer on page 65, or no, this is the way that you're supposed to do it. I moved my right foot here because that's the way Soke did it. That's not the right answer. In fact, if you're mimicking someone else, you're doing the martial arts wrong. The word art itself means an expression of who you are through physical motion. Whether it's painting, sculpting, dance, singing, it doesn't matter. It's a physical outlet that you use to express yourself. Yes, without doubt, we have to learn form. Yes, we have to learn proper basics and fundamentals. But to be great, to be what it is that you want to be, you have to learn to get off of that rigid form and find out who you truly are through your own motion. A warrior should be careful of all things and should dislike to be the least bit worsted. After all, if he is not careful in his choice of words, he may say things like, I'm a coward, or at the time I'd probably run, or how frightening, or how painful. These are words that should not be said even in jest, on a whim, or when talking in one's sleep. If a person with understanding hears such things, he will see the bottom of the speaker's heart. This is something that should be carefully thought out beforehand. This particular passage can be understood in many different ways. And in fact, depending on where you are in life and what you have done in life, your understanding of each one of these passages will be completely different. When talking about understanding what you say beforehand, in the modern day, I look at it like this. We have to understand that we all live a professional life, a personal life, and a private life. A martial artist, a samurai, has to conduct themselves a certain way. You should never slander someone, argue with someone, belittle someone in public. If you're going to yell at someone, or if you have a disagreement with someone, or you have to say things, even if those things are negative, you should do that in private. A perfect example of today, instead of seeing all this childish action online, if someone had something to say, they should do it in private in an email. That's, and that's what I do. If I have something to say, and I know that it's negative, or I know that it can be perceived as negative, I will talk to that person one-on-one -on -one in private through email, or a phone call, or face-to-face. -face. I won't make it to the public view. Because that's not the way a martial artist conducts themselves. No matter what, private matters need to be taken privately. Personal matters need to be taken personally. And professional matters need to be taken professionally. None of these matters have to be taken publicly. A samurai knows this. A martial artist knows this. And this is the way that you should conduct yourself if you're studying true Budo. A person with a bit of wisdom is one who will criticize the times. This is the basis of disaster. A person who is discreet in speaking will be useful during the good times and will avoid punishment during the bad. This passage by Yamamoto Sutomo is um, heard very deeply to me as I made a video one time called Action Speak Loud of the Words. And um, this passage is what spurred that particular video. I think it is absolutely true. There are people who are criticize everything. And it's easy to sit back and criticize anything because nothing's perfect. It's hard to make yourself a better person. It's hard to admit when you've done something wrong. It's hard to admit that you have to redo something to make it better because you weren't good enough the first time. But the people that do that, the people that will say, you know what, I made a mistake. That is the martial way. That is the samurai. The people that will sit back and criticize others and belittle others, they're not. So the idea of action speak louder than words, that's something that we hold very dear to our hearts here at the Budo Dio Ninja Dojo. And that particular method, that idea was spurred from this particular passage by Yamamoto Osudama. A person who is said to be proficient in the arts is like a fool. Because of his foolishness and concerning himself with just one thing, he thinks of nothing else, and thus becomes proficient. He is a worthless person. Again, the understanding can go many different ways, but when I read this, when I read the words, and the, to the people who are only concerned themselves with just that one thing, you know, uh, they're like a fool. I think this is true. There are many things that I do with my life professionally, personally, and privately 
and I don't think that it's proper for any martial artist to sit underneath a waterfall on a rock and meditate for 24 hours. I don't think that's where you find enlightenment. Now this is just my personal opinion, and clearly it's the opinion of Yamamoto Satomo here in the Kagakura, because to me, saying if you're only doing that one thing every day, and your mind is only fixed on this one thing. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a video and I'm going to do this. And it's the same thing over and over again. When you're only fixated on that one thing, whether it's the, the best ninja writer or the best ninja hater or the best ninja instructor or the best ninja practitioner, it doesn't matter. If your whole day is bent on that one thing, you're not living life. You're definitely not happy, and you're not experiencing the things of happiness and joy that you could to make yourself a better person. Concerning Marshall Bauer, merit lies more in dying for one's master than striking down the enemy. This can be understood from the devotion of Sato Sunagobu. These words by Yamamoto Satomo ring very clear to me. Many times I've had people that will talk ill about some of my teachers and some of the martial arts that I teach or that I've inherited. And instead of going after them, instead of doing something that is unbecoming of a martial artist, I've always held myself in the way that a martial artist should. I've always done everything with honor, dignity, and loyalty. And regardless of whether the opposition wants to talk ill about my teachers and all these different fabrications, I will always stand behind my masters, and I will defend them, and I will do exactly what they told me to do, and they've always taught me actions speak louder than words, so I will stand up every single day and teach these warrior traditions that I have been taught and that I have inherited to all the students of the Buddha Dinichi's Dojo. It's more honorable for me to walk my own path and to teach the arts that I choose to do and to honor my masters that have given me these arts, these teachings, to my students than it is for me to go after the opposition. One should be wary of talking on end about such subjects as learning, morality, or folklore in front of elders or people of rank. It is disagreeable to listen to. How many times have you guys seen in your life someone that has absolutely no rank in the arts? Or very little rank, like maybe they're like a first degree black belt or something. And they just belittle other people that have a lot more rank, even more rank in the art that they study. That happens a lot. And this is unbecoming of samurai. This is unbecoming of a martial artist. People who talk on end about matters of little importance probably have some complaint in the back of their mind. But in order to be ambiguous, to hide this, they repeat what they're saying over and over. To hear something like this causes doubt to arise in one's breast. What this particular passage means to me is to be able to observe other people. When you recognize that another individual, or another person, you keep talking about the same thing over and over and over again, and they try to make the same point over and over, clearly they're trying to overcompensate for something. And more than likely, it's because of their own insecurity. More than likely, they're probably talking about themselves, and they're using some action of another person as an outlet for them to feel better about themselves. By belittling someone else, they don't have to feel bad. Deep down in their heart, they know that once they're done belittling them, and they leave the room, and they go home, and they look in the mirror, they see the sad, pathetic soul that they are. And instead of making themselves better, they try to tear other people down. The people like that will never be true samurai. They'll never be true martial artists, true buddhika. Because a true buddhika would rise up and make themselves better. Better than the people around them. Not try to tear everybody else down. That's, that's not the way. It's never been the way. And until the people understand that, they'll never understand that. Again, the particular book that I was reading from is called the Hogakure, The Book of the Samurai by Yamamoto Satomo, and it was translated by William Scott Wilson. If you guys like some of these translations, this particular book is sold in the Ninjutsu Superstore, which is located at www.ninjutsusuperstore.com. 
If you guys like this video and some of the philosophies that was within the Hokakure, and you're interested in studying classical Japanese fighting arts, authentic ninjutsu, and traditional samurai bujutsu, then please look at the official website of the Budodu Ninjutsu Dojo. It's located at www.budodunijutsu.com. There, you can see all the information about what we do, as well as the seven word traditions that we teach. Thank you guys very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Budo.